Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do a quick video for you today about the items that you need for wood carving. Um, now it's a question I get asked fairly often, um, you know, what, what do I need if I want to start wood carving, what tools do I need, um, you know, how do I get the relevant experience, how do I know which item to choose, you know, how do I, how do I sort out the good from the bad, that kind of thing. Um, and what I thought I'd do is I'd split this video into two parts, because it's quite a large topic, um, and I thought I'd start today with just the basics of what you really need for wood carving. Um, now I've got a selection of tools here, I'm not going to talk about all of them today, um, but I'm going to bring the camera just a little bit closer in and I'll show you sort of just my opinion of, of the sort of the fundamentals that you need if you want to start wood carving. Right then guys, well here we have a fairly broad selection of my woodworking tools. Um, some of them are more um, indispensable or more vital than others um, if you want to get into wood carving. Um, so to start off with really, um, to answer the question of this video is what, what do you really need in order to start wood carving? This is probably the only item you will need. Um, now this is a Swiss Army knife. Um, you know, you can you, basically any form of good quality sharp knife will allow you to start wood carving almost straight away. So I've got a little piece of offcut stick here, um, and again, this knife absolutely fine to shape this into something else. Whether you're trying to make a spoon or a spatula. Um, you know, whatever it may be. As long as you've got a sharp knife, um, you can generally carve most things. Um, now a Swiss Army knife is generally a really good way to go. Um, they're good quality, you can sharpen them really well. Um, an alternative to this, um, and it's something I think I've shown in a few of my other videos, is one of these. Now this is a farrier's knife. Um, it's used for cleaning and cutting horses' hooves. Um, the benefit of this is you've got this kind of rounded tip here, um, which means you're not going to accidentally stab yourself, which is good. Um, it, they're generally sharpened on both sides. Um, and uh, very similar to the Swiss Army knife, you know, you can use this in either a, a sort of a push direction like so, or a slightly more controlled pull like this. Um, and you can do pretty much everything you can with one, of, uh, with one of these as you could with the Swiss Army knife. The benefit of having this very small hooked section is that you can kind of use it to scoop out a very small hollow. Now I've tried making a spoon with just one of these. It is possible, though it's very labour intensive. Um, but you know, as an alternative, you know, one of the, a good quality Swiss Army knife will cost you 10 to 15 pounds, maybe more so if you go for something like this, which is one of the Alox versions. Um, a farrier's knife on the internet you can pick up for about five pounds. Um, so if you want to go on a real, real budget, something like this will do you really, really well. Um, the alternative is obviously one of the Mora's. You can pick these up again for 10 to 15 pounds. Um, they're brilliant little knives, they cut really well, um, and if you're doing this in conjunction with the sort of bushcraft, you know, you can't go wrong with um, a Mora knife. So fundamentally, if you want to start carving, you need to get yourself a knife. Um, it doesn't matter which one of these three or, or any other that you choose, provided it's good and it's sharp um, and it's kind of suited to carving. Something with a Scandinavian grind is superb, um, but even just a small pocket knife like this is absolutely fine. Um, so that's the first basic that you will need. Um, in conjunction with that, there are two things that just I personally believe that you need. There's a lot of contention about this in different um, sort of bushcraft and woodworking circles. The first thing I think that's, that's absolutely indispensable is a saw. Now the Baco Laplander, which you've probably seen in some of my other videos, um, I think is a really, really good all-round saw. Um, and what this will allow you to do is not only will it allow you to trim off and, sh and to a degree shape certain pieces of wood that you're working with, it will also allow you to collect your wood as well. So if you're out and you've got access to sort of a small forest environment or something like that and you find a fallen tree, um, you can use this. I mean, I've got this one here, which is my uh, Silky Gontaro. And again, very similar, slightly longer blade, and it's a fixed blade as well. You, just can, you can put a little bit more power into this. 
um, and it cuts ever so slightly quicker. But again, it doesn't. I'm not really talking about brands today, though obviously I will name the ones that I'm picking up. Um, but it's not particularly about the brand, it's about the piece of equipment. And I personally think that a saw is, is absolutely vital if you're going out collecting um, your own wood for carving and also for when you're carving it it will allow you to remove if, if you've got a, a, a sort of a large stock section and you only need half of it you can in theory and I've done this before you can just carve off that excess but it is very time consuming when you can pick up a saw and within 30 seconds you've taken off a, a big large chunk um, so the combination of the knife and the saw I think is absolutely vital um, and if you're doing any kind of carving um, in fact really any kind of carving at all unless you're kind of whittling very small sticks um, an axe in my view is also just as important um, now this is my little Grants Falls mini hatchet um, I've said before this is by, by far my favorite axe it's very very well suited for carving but something of this size not necessarily this brand I mean obviously you're, you're welcome to go out and get a Grants Falls um, but something this size is absolutely brilliant for carving um, you can go larger I mean just at the back there I've got the um, uh, my carving axe uh, which is also really really good um, and again it just depends on what you want to do for yourself um, so those are really the three basics that I would say if you want to start getting into carving um, aside from learning sort of the correct safety and you know especially you know, all of these items are sharp and they will do you an injury if you don't know how to use them properly so that's obviously very very important but probably a topic for another video um, but these three items will allow you to carve most things um, you may not be able to make sort of like a, a, a big bowl or something like that out of it without maybe a gouge or, or, or an adze or something like that. But those are the three fundamentals. Um, and just in conjunction with those, sandpaper. Um, now any sandpaper will do it a pinch. I prefer this style which is um, sort of fabric backed. It's very, very strong. It doesn't rip on you. It doesn't break apart when it starts getting um, sort of fairly well used. Um, and it just tends to last a lot longer than the paperback variety. Um, but those, those three tools plus the sandpaper um, will allow you to start carving um, and, and carving some quite, quite intricate and delicate things um, and, and give you a really, really good broad range of, uh, of options for carving different kinds of items. Right then guys, so just as a quick recap, um, and again this is just my opinion, so if you want to start carving, what you need is a knife. Now whether it's a small Swiss Army knife like this, or a sort of fixed blade mora along this line, um, to a degree it doesn't really matter. Um, provided you've got a good sharp knife, um, you can start carving. And you, you can generally carve quite a few different things, you know, spoons, um, aside from getting the indentation in the bowl. Now you can carve a spoon with a Swiss Army knife, it takes a little bit more work and a little bit more care to sort of scoop out a bowl and generally it takes a little bit longer on the sanding side to smooth it out afterwards, um, but you can very easily make a spoon with just a knife. Um, in conjunction with those obviously, you've got your saw and you've got some form of axe. Um, now the saw and the axe really are there to make your life more easy um, and what it will do, it will allow you to remove a lot more material a lot more quickly um, and, and yeah, it's not to say that you're rushing through it, you know, you need to do it safely but if you're trying to rough out a spoon blank an axe will do the job in I don't know, 5-10 minutes let's say, depending on your skill level, um, as opposed to 20-30 to 30 minutes if you're just using a knife. And the, the risk of using a knife for something like just a knife for that is that people, especially if you're new to carving, you're very tempted to kind of go like this and try and remove loads and loads of material very quickly, um, and that's where accidents tend to happen. So again, keeping safety in mind. An axe is very, very useful, provided it's used safely. A knife can also be used just as safely, provided you take your time and you take care when you're using it. Um, so that's just my thoughts on what you really need to start carving. Those are sort of the, the fundamentals in my mind, and if I, if I ever take somebody out to sort of the woodlands with me who want to give it a go, those are the three tools I will try and get them familiar with, make sure they're using them safely. Um, and generally, you know, you, you can make most carved items 
out of just those three tools. Um, well, what I'm going to do, guys, next video, um, I'm going to look a little bit more in depth at some of the other items that are not essential, but will either open up more possibilities for you um, or make your life slightly easier. Um, so yeah, that was basically it, guys. So I hope it was useful, maybe giving you something to think about. Comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks, guys.